So uh, we're going to be getting into conditional probabilities today. And you can do them a, a couple different ways, but the first way we're going to do is look at the table, a two-way table. So with this particular two-way table, we're looking at pierced ears versus gender. And you've seen this table before. We've already kind of done some problems with it. Except this time, we're going to do problems that involve given. That would be a conditional probability. Um, so this part A is saying, find the probability that a randomly selected person has pierced ears given that the person is female. So on the condition that the person is female. So we would only be looking at the females. It's like we're zooming in only on the females and we're finding the probability that a person has pierced ears. So yes to pierced ears is 84 out of only the females 88. And if we were going to write this probability out, we would be looking for the probability of having pierced ears given that the person is female. And I could um, put it into symbols because up here I say that A is female and B is pierced ears. So this case would be the probability of B given A. And we said there's 84 with pierced ears out of just the total females, 88. And then over here, we're finding the probability that a randomly selected person is male given they have pierced ears. So on the condition that they have pierced ears, we only want people that have pierced ears and we're looking for the probability that the person is male given pierced ears. Okay, so the probability of being male out of the total pierced ears would be 19 out of 103. Moving on. So, again, this is that notation for conditional probability. Probability of A given that B has already occurred. So here's another kind of example of that. If we roll a dice, what's the probability that we roll a 3? Well, our sample space when we roll a dice is that we could get a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Or 6. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So if we want the probability that we roll a 3, that only happens once out of those six possible times. But if we turn it into a conditional probability and we ask what's the probability that we roll a three given that we rolled an odd, then that reduces our sample space to only the odd outcomes, one, three, and five. So now what's the probability of rolling a three? Well, there's one option out of these three. So it changes the probability when it's a conditional probability. Now here's some rules for conditional probability. Um, the the um, formula sheet gives you this one, okay, but the one that I like to use is this and I'll show you why on the next slide, but this is the one that I would recommend you use. It's the same formula, it's just rearranged. So like if I divided by the probability of A over here, I would get this formula. Um, this is not on the formula sheet. This one is up here. Okay, let's just point out a few things. The probability of A given B is not necessarily going to be the same thing as the probability of B given A. Here is how the formulas work. Here's the probability of A given B. On the top, we have the probability of A and B. On the bottom, probability of B. This is the opposite, probability of B given A. The top's the same, probability of A and B. But look at what's on the bottom now. 
So here's what you need to know. That whatever you're given, that's the probability that goes on the bottom. Over here, we're given A, that's the probability that goes on the bottom. And is always what's on top. Okay, so just take a second to kind of digest that. The probability of A and B is always on the top, but whatever you're given is the probability that goes on the bottom. Given A has occurred, probability of A goes on the bottom. So now we're just going to do a couple examples using that those formulas. Okay, so in an apartment complex, 40% of the residents read USA Today, 25% read New York Times, and 5% read both. Suppose we select a resident of the apartment complex at random. What's the probability that a resident reads the USA Today or the New York Times? Okay, we have formulas for or. We learned those days ago. So if I want the probability of USA Today or New York Times, I have a formula. And we need to decide, do these have an overlap? Can someone read both USA Today and New York Times? And the answer is yes, there's an overlap. So when it's an or problem, you add up the probabilities. So the probability of USA Today plus the probability of New York Times. But when there's an overlap, you have to subtract off the probability of USA Today and New York Times. If there's no overlap, then you're just basically subtracting zero. So it's just you're just adding the two probabilities up. But when there is an overlap, you do need to subtract it. So the probability of reading USA Today is 0 0.40. The probability of reading New York Times is 0.25. And we're going to subtract off the 5%, 0 0.05 and we end up with 0 0.60. Okay, that's a review. The next problem is what's the probability that the resident read the New York Times given they read USA Today? Or what's the probability that the residents read the New York Times given that they read USA Today? Okay, so New York Times, oops, Okay, New York Times, given that they read USA Today. So if we use our formulas, and is supposed to go on top, and whatever we're given goes on the bottom. So the probability of New York Times and USA Today goes on the top, and the probability of what we're given, USA, goes on the bottom. And we were told the probability of New York Times and USA Today reading both was 0.05. And we were told the probability of USA Today was 0 0.40. And when you divide those, you get 0.125. Okay, moving on. Independence is kind of a big deal. We need to be able to tell when two events are independent. And the definition is up here. It says two events are independent if knowing that one occurs does not change the probability that the other occurs. So if one happens, it has no effect on the other one happening. So here's an example of two events that are independent. Rolling a five on the first die and rolling a three on the second die. They're two separate dice. How Whatever I get on the first roll has no, no effect on what I get on my second roll. They're independent events. Knowing that the first die is a 5 does not change the probability that the second die is a 3. Those are independent events. Now we have some rules for independent events. So you can use these rules to verify that two things are independent, or if you know they're independent, then you can use the rules. So the first rule says, 
if we have the probability of A given B, then that will end up equaling just the probability of A, if these events are independent. Essentially what that's saying is, it doesn't matter what B did, it has no effect on the probability of A. So B happening doesn't matter. It has no effect on what the probability of A is. Same thing over here. The probability of B given A, if they're independent, should just equal the probability of B. A happening has no effect. It's like it doesn't even need to be there. Same over here. The probability of B happening, no, no effect. Doesn't matter. They're independent. Okay? But I don't want to cross those out because they're a part of the formula. Okay, and then here's another rule for AND problems. If they're independent events, then you can take the probability of A and multiply by the probability of B. Again, this is AND. We haven't had a formula for AND yet. We had formulas for OR. This is our first formula for AND. And it only works if they're independent. That's key. Okay, you can only use this formula if you know they're independent. Or, if this formula works, then you can prove they're independent. If this formula works, you can prove they're independent. If this formula works, you can prove they're independent. Okay, so here's some information. We got probability of A, probability of B, and probability of A and B, and we want to know, are these independent? So we can use one of the previous formulas. The formula said, okay, well, if the probability of A and B really does equal the probability of A times the probability of B, then yeah, they'll be independent. So let's check it. Is the probability of A and B, which is 0.15, is that really equal to the probability of A, which is 0.4, times the probability of B, which is 0.5? Does that check out? Well, 0.4 times 0.5 is 0.2. No, they're not equal. So that means they're not independent. Because the formula didn't work. Okay. Now, this video, I can only record in 15-minute chunks, so I'm going to need to record a second video. So start watching that now, and we'll pick up where we left off, okay? Do watch the second video, because there's more stuff on there that you need for the homework. Okay? Thank you.